Hello again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and today we're going to be taking a look at this. It's the TC Electronic Sentry Noise Gate Pedal. I did a video a little while ago where I talked about whether or not you actually need a noise gate uh, in your signal, uh, signal chain. And in there I advise you always look to get rid of any noise in the signal before you resort to putting a, a noise gate in the signal path. You know, check that all your leads are of good quality and they're working. Make sure that the guitar screen properly to uh, eliminate any electrical hum that's coming from, you know, interference from like electric lights or, or whatever. Um, you know, just basically make sure that everything's working. So make sure that if you put a noise gate in, you know, what you don't want to be doing is treating the symptom when there's actually a more a more significant underlying cause. It could be a you know problem with uh, equipment that's faulty or is about to fail. Yeah. You know. This guitar, however, which is the Fender USA Standard Strat, um, the single coil pickups, and it's not a, a fault so much, it's just a characteristic that single coil pickups tend, do tend to hum a little bit more uh, than humbucker pickups. And these pickups in particular, the, the slightly lower output than the ones on my Mexican Standard Strat. So sometimes if I want a bit of drive, I want to boost the signal a little bit more, turn the gain up a tad more on the amp, or add in a little bit more gain from pedals and with this sound now this is the guitar with the, the bridge and the middle pickup together so they are sort of cancelling each other out and, and making it reasonably quiet this is the sound with not playing anything straight into the dirty channel on the amp with the drive set about halfway if I turn the blend control here down and take the middle pickup out of the equation so we just hear the bridge pickup on its own now you can hear there's a little bit of a hum like I say, it's not a fault so much, it's just a characteristic of single call pickups. You can't really hear it so much when I'm playing. But when I stop, it's always kind of just there in the background. And if I add a, say, a distortion pedal or a drive pedal, so this is the Digitech Bad Monkey, it's a, something I often do, just add in the drive pedal on top of the, the dirt channel on the arm. great sound but you can hear the hum just there constantly in the background and if I do something a bit more extreme let's kick in I've got a screaming blues pedal on the board as well that's starting to get overpowered you know it's not so much a problem when I'm playing but as soon as I stop that noise level is is coming through and the answer to this sort of problem is a pedal like a noise gate so I went shopping for uh, a noise gate pedal there's one or two that I kind of had in mind but as soon as I mentioned to anybody that I was thinking about looking for uh, a noise gate pedal everybody said the same thing that ah you'd be looking for the TC Sentry then so I thought if there's that many people saying that this is the pedal I should be checking out I'm going to check it out and certainly I'm very very impressed with what it does. Just taking a look around it, um, it's the usual TC uh, sort of form factor for a single stomp box, uh, nice solid metal construction, uh, nice positive action on that uh, foot, uh, foot switch and three knobs for threshold, damp and decay which I'll talk through a little bit in a, in a second. There's also a switch up the top there which allows you to select the type of noise gate that you're using either a traditional noise gate type of sound at the top down the bottom it's a multi-band noise gate specifically for eliminating hiss type of noise from the from the sound and in the middle there's a tone print setting. I'm not going to go into tone prints too much um, basically it's, it's a way of configuring the the pedal to operate in the specifically the way that you want. So if there's parts of the, the range on those knobs that you don't use, you can actually recalibrate them through the tone print software and then update the tone print on the, on the pedal. Uh, this one comes with a tone print installed. I'm not sure whose it is or quite what the settings are, but like I said, because of the infinite flexibility of, uh, of tone print, it's not really worth going into that in, in too much detail. Uh, in this this demo, it's, it's a little bit of an artificial thing to demonstrate because you you know you can make the tone print do whatever you want. So today we'll just be going through the standard settings that the pedal's got. It takes a regular nine volt power supply, or you can operate it off a battery if you want. 
if you pop the back open there's a little uh, some dip switches inside and you can select whether it's true bypass or buffered bypass if you're into your um, you know your pedal board configuration you'll be aware of what the the, the relevance of a true bypass or a buffered bypass uh, are and you know whether one is better than the other for your particular case if you're not familiar with that sort of thing don't worry about it the important message is when the pedal is switched off basically the signal goes straight in straight out it doesn't go through any other circuitry so when the pedal's not being used it doesn't uh, it doesn't clear your sound in any way uh, how you can connect this into your signal chain there's actually three options you can just do a regular sort of configuration where you plug your guitar into your various drive pedals and whatnot all the front of amp things, then into the noise gate, out of the noise gate and into the amp. Second way you can configure it, and this is the way that I've got set up here, just kind of works uh, a little bit better for me, is you plug your, um, I've got my guitar plugged into the tuner, then the tuner into the um, into the noise gate, and the noise gate then goes out to the amplifier, and effectively the noise gate then has what's it's a little bit like an effects loop, I guess, where you go out into the drive pedals and back into the noise gate again. So third way of configuring this way, you can actually get the noise gate to trigger uh, off kick drum, so you can put a like a separate um, separate signal into it. A uh, bit of a specialist uh, sort of setup, and not something I'm going to be demonstrating today. I'm just keeping it pretty much as a, a guitar type thing. So the pedal's currently off. If you turn the volume control up, you can hear the noise. Step on the foot switch. That red light comes on, shows us the pedal's working, and the noise is just miraculously stopped. If I play, see the light goes green. Let's the, basically that's the noise gate opening up. Is that's basically what a noise gate does. It's at rest, it's shut, it doesn't allow any signal through. You don't get any signal, you don't get any noise. When you play, it actuates the gate, the gate opens up. It allows the signal through so you can hear the sound of the guitar. The noise is coming through as well, but because the um, guitar signal's there as well, you can't hear the noise because it's kind of masked by the, the sound of the guitar. Then when you stop playing, gate closes again, stops any signal getting through, so that stops the noise. And we've got a few controls on the pedal that allow us to control how the gate operates and allows us to sort of like dial in the, the behavior that we're after. The most important switch is probably the threshold one. Turn the volume up on the guitar and what this does is it sets the level where the pedal considers what it's hearing to be noise. So currently the gate is closed as you can hear. There's no noise coming through and that little LED is red. If I turn the threshold knob up, that light's now gone green. So this is basically a bad setting for the threshold. What I've done is set the threshold so high that the noise that's coming through is actually enough to trigger the gate. The gate's open, signal's getting through, and I'm not playing, you can hear noise. So what we need to do with the threshold control is tune it so it's low enough that when nothing's being played, the gate is closed, but when I do play, the gate will open, let the signal through and then shut afterwards. Now these two controls here, the damp and decay, they allow us to, to control the behaviour of the noise gate, to get some of the sounds nice and natural. Uh, let's start off with the damp, I'll turn this all the way down, now you can hear that's letting a little bit of noise through. And this control is all about how much the pedal actually attenuates the signal. If I turn the damp control right the way up, you can hear it starting to get quieter. So you can hear that's more effective up full. Than it is down there. I'll just set that back to halfway and look at the decay knob. What the decay knob allows you to do is to control how um, fast the gate closes. If I turn this all the way down, play something. You can see there, that's decaying quite quickly. Turn that up to the other extreme and play something.
So you can hear there, it takes a while before the, the gate actually closes. Now there's no specific right way or wrong way to set these controls up. Uh, it, the trick to setting a noise gate up really, it's about getting something that stops the noise coming through in your signal, but still allows the guitar to sound natural. Really what you're looking for is something where people can't tell that you've got a noise gate in the signal chain. It should be should be completely transparent. So you need to fiddle around with these, these settings. So you set the threshold so it's just right, so it'll stop the noise. It's at the level where the gate's closing when there's no guitar signal, but it's opening when there is. And quite where that is depends a little bit as well on your picking dynamics. If you're somebody who uses a lot of like quite gentle picking and you have some very, very subtle uh, notes coming through, you need to dial in just the right point. So even when you're playing the guitar quietly, that quiet guitar signal is still enough to open the gate up. The damping and decay, it's about setting those so for the way you play it sounds natural. You don't hear the gate suddenly opening or suddenly closing and you don't hear it sort of um, hanging open for, for a long time so when you stop playing there's this little gap where where noise is getting through because that's just going to sound dead, going to sound wrong and, and unnatural. It's personal preference, it's personal um, sort of style how the pedal reacts to you. Now I've cautioned in the past about not buying something just because it's got the most features. Uh, you know, sometimes something that with fewer features is actually better. In this case, I would say TC Pedal has got a lot of features on it, but they're all really useful, they're relevant, and they have a place in there. Uh, one I haven't particularly talked about is that little switch up in the, the top left hand corner for uh, hiss, gate, or tone print. So for my particular setup, I find it works quite well in hiss. Um, this is a more modern sort of setting, it's a multi-band noise gate. The regular gate setting, that's a more traditional noise gate, and I find it just doesn't pull certain frequencies out of the, the signal the way that I want it to. Tone print, you've got ultimate flexibility, and as I said, you can uh, pretty much con configure the way these controls work exactly as you want them. So demonstrating that here is a little bit artificial because you know, I will only be showing one of you know an infinite number of, of combinations. But all these features together give you something that's very, very flexible, so you can dial in a, a sound, um, well, not so much a sound, but a, a bunch of settings that give you a, an effective noise gate solution, but it still sounds natural, which is you know what a, what a noise gate should be all about. In terms of value for money, I think I paid about £100 for this when it came out a few months ago. Um, certainly don't regret it. It does exactly what I want. It's um, certainly going to last me. I've got a lot of experience with TC pedals. You know, they're really well built, uh, good quality, good quality things. So I don't mind investing a bit of money for something that's uh, something that's well built. So if you've got noise in your signal chain and you've tried things like making sure your your, your cables are good, making sure there's no faults in any of your pedals, making sure the, the tubes in your amp are all good and that sort of thing. If you've still got noise as a problem, uh, then yeah, noise gate is the way for you and I would certainly recommend checking out the TC Sentry. Other noise gates obviously are out there and are available, but uh, I think for the money and for the features and what it does, it's well worth checking out. So there you go, that's the TC Electronic Sentry noise gate pedal. Hope you found that uh, useful. If you did, please click like, subscribe, comment down there all the various options that YouTube gives you and if you've got a question you'd like to ask me or suggest something for a future video then if you go here there's a form you can fill in and I'll try and get around to answering your question in a future video as soon as I can. Okay that's all for now thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.